Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're here taking a look at Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. Um, this is a game made by uh, Black Lab, I think? Right? Maybe UCP? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm not sure. I know Slytherin's publishing it, and I think Black Lab is the one who's working on it. But that could be UCP as well. I should really get my details straight before I start recording an episode, huh? Aha, uh -huh. let's call it uh, Broadcaster's Rust or something. <clears throat> anyway, I'm really excited about this game. I was I was sort of indifferent to it when I first heard about it, because I'm like, Battlestar Galactica. It's one of those sci-fi series that, you know, I enjoyed uh, the reboot uh, up until a certain point in the, in the reboot, and then it feels, to me anyway, I like to jump the shark. Um... I'm going to get into that for spoilers for a 10-year-old show. Over 10 years now. Man, that's... Time flies. Um, and, and I mean, you know, as a little kid, I remember uh, watching the Battlestar Galactica movie. Or maybe it was like the made-for-TV movie that was edited into a movie. Regardless, <clears throat> what really caught my eye about this game wasn't the uh, setting that it's in, although... Having played around a little bit, the setting works pretty well. Uh, but it is the fact that this is a space naval strategy game, which we do not have a lot of. And, <clears throat> I mean, first off, we don't have a lot of naval strategy games. As it is, we've even less that decided to put the setting in space. But, um, hey, this one does. It's set in the, uh... In the rebooted universe, so in the, you know, drunk Colonel Ty and mustached Adama, briefly, and, um, <clears throat> you know, female Starbuck, it's set in that galaxy. So this isn't the 1970s Battlestar Galactica. This is definitely the rebooted Battlestar Galactica, but this rebooted Battlestar Galactica is set in the Cylon War. <clears throat> so you won't see anybody. Well, there's... There's one cameo that I've come across so far in my couple hours of playing. But otherwise, you won't really see any characters from the TV show. Which makes sense. Because this Battlestar Galactica War is, uh... Or this Cylon War is way, way back in the future. Anyway. it's enough of me rambling. Uh, to just basically say, I think the setting works really well the type of game that's going on. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what you can do. You can do uh, two campaigns. Well, two campaigns, provided you've already started. When you can do a new campaign, you can resume, you can load. You can do a skirmish, which we'll just quickly take a look at. We're not going to load up a skirmish. But it's a point-based skirmish system. Um, this is chugging a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. We'll let it do its thing. Uh, so basically, I mean, it's just a, it's a point based skirmish system where you can deck out a couple of custom fleets and as you see here you got your fleet points you got the map you want to play on there's only four maps you can proceed and then so this is a little colonial fleet that I made up of, of a couple of uh, whoa let's get that set a couple of Minotaur gunships <clears throat> An Atlas Carrier, which is something I never heard of before, and obviously Jupiter Battlestar, just to see that puppy running around. <clears throat> and so, you know, that's... This is... I mean, it's it's a good way to go about... Well, let's just even that out for reasons... That, for no reason. Um, it's a good way to test out ships. You know, if you want to if you want to figure out, okay, well, what does a Jupiter Battle, Battlestar actually do... Um, you can also, let's go back, well, I guess here, let's go back up the point system so you can see. So you can have that, you know, you can customize your fleets. There's a few fleets set up here, so like this Colonial Orion 1, the Jupiter Battlestar, an Artemis Battlestar, a Minotaur, and a Manticore. I've got some Cylon ships here too. Uh, if you want to play around with Cylon base stars and, and things like that, um, I believe, you know, the skirmish is the only way to go about doing that. Um, you can do multiplayer as well. 
I think. Yeah, you can do multiplayer as well, but I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, it's not really my thing. Um, <clears throat> oh, what video browser is? Options menu. We'll take a look at that. Let's see, we got music or sound control, camera control, um, simulation options, graphic options. There's not really too much going on in graphic op options, but. Um, you know, that's okay. It's not really a taxing uh, game, I don't think. I mean, when I started yesterday, I sat down at 5, started playing, and then, like, stood up at 10. It was... <laughs> it, the game started to get a little choppy after 5 hours, which is unexpected, or which is, you know, to be expected. That's a long time to sit there and play a game without taking any breaks or anything, so, you know... Um, but for the first couple hours, it was running smooth and fine, so I figure it's just, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, stuff. There's a, there's a thing that, that happens with the, with the combat that I'll show you guys, um, that could be playing into it, I think. Anyway, <clears throat> today we are going to start a new campaign. We're going to start on commander level, because, like, we don't need to go easy. Uh, yeah, you know what, we'll reset the tutorials just to make it a little bit easier and refresh my brain from yesterday. After Vergon buried their nukes, the leaders of the Twelve Colonies promised we would never see war of that scale again. Peace would reign in our lifetime, and the lifetimes of our children. They could not have predicted the Cylon Rebellion less than 30 years later. The worst conflict in colonial history, and we are at a stalemate. No foothold gained that isn't lost again within weeks. The Jupiter Project was supposed to be our ace in the hole, the largest, most powerful battle stars ever created. Each of the twelve colonies were promised one, in return for signing the Articles of Colonization. The first, Galactica, was Caprica's crowning glory. It went missing, two weeks after deployment. Athena, the fifth ship to be completed, belongs to Pycon. We were days away from delivering it when we heard the news. Icon's capital cities were devastated by silent assault fleets. Among them, our own colonial fleet headquarters. There was no chance to intervene. Command of Colonial Fleet has fallen to Rear Admiral Kane. Our mobile shipyard, Daedalus, has become the ad hoc fleet headquarters. As Kane's XO aboard Daedalus, you have been promoted to Operations Commander of the entire Colonial Fleet. Kane intends immediate retaliation for the attack on PyCon. The War Room awaits your arrival, Commander. Alright, so that set us up pretty well. Uh, so it's basically the start of the Cylon War. <clears throat> the Twelve Colonies have been invaded, and it's our job to kill some fracking toasters. Pycon's Battlestar is almost ready to deliver, but Sinan says it can't make an independent jump until the fuel lines have stabilized. Kane's orders are to jump Daedalus to Pycon with the Battlestar Athena attached ASAP. That means we have to clear the scouts here or risk telegraphing our movements to the entire Cylon fleet. I'll prep the deck crews for the jump while you deal with the toasters. Good hunting, Commander. All right, so uh, what we got here is the sort of main uh, system map that you're going to be taking a look at throughout uh, the game. So this is where, you know, the plotting, the, the decision making, all that goes down. So as you can see, oh, excuse me, hmm. uh, from the table you will guide, the course of the colonial, oh, hiccups are not a good thing to get when you begin recording. 
Ah, from this table, you will guide the course of the colonial fleet during the early years of the first Cylon War, the fate of the Twelve Colonies, and the future of humanity will be shaped by your actions here. So, um, the way the game works, you've got story beats, obviously, and we're in the first beat of the story, um, but it's not exactly linear. I'll get into that once once I can explain it better. But uh, you can see this little this icon here means, hey, you've got a campaign mission here to do at Scorpio, I believe, or PyCon. I'm not exactly totally sure on which planets are which anymore, <clears throat> or ever, really. I mean, I'm not, like I say, I'm not the biggest Battlestar Galactica nerd. Anyway, you can move your fleets around, and you can have more than one fleet, and in fact, it will become necessary for you to get more fleets on the go in the future. Uh, as it is now, we've got our shipyard. We will proceed, and, um... We get a couple of ships, too. And we get a couple of Corvettes, and we get the Athena, which is a freshly built Battlestar. We don't get to keep the Athena, though. Uh, all the Battlestars have been promised to the Twelve Colonies, as you heard in the opening... It's time to make our presence known in this war, Commander. I trust you won't need my instruction twice. Tell your ships to move full speed towards the enemy. All right, so... <clears throat> uh, as I was saying... The Battlestar we got, I guess, over there? Somewhere. Uh, maybe it's not showing up in our ship. Anyway, that's been promised to PyCon, so we don't get to keep it. Anyway, we've got WASD to move the camera. We can rotate the camera with either Q and E, or you can use the mouse as well. And, I mean, really, I like using the mouse. Because you get finer control over things. You can, uh, what is it, scroll if you left click. Then you can, you know, sort of shimmy around the map. Anyway, let's get let's get continuing here, shall we? Uh, click on a unit projection to move. So we got our ships here. We got two Manticore class Corvettes, and we got an unknown contact out there. So um, here is the ship we got, the Perseus. <clears throat> I'm going to be butchering some of these names. What with them being all classical names. Anyway, we can see here um, on the right hand side of our screen. We got our armor and the armor facing, so we can see these Manticore Corvettes have more armor on the top and the front than they do on the sides, the rear, or the bottom. So they're designed kind of like fly forward. Um, so we will get our ship to fly forward. Proceed when you're confident with your <clears throat> commands. So because it's space, obviously, right? Like we work in three dimensions here. So when you're moving, you set your forward movement first. And then you can set, you know, how high up or how low down you want to go. We'll send so that guy a little high. We'll keep that guy going medium. So those are our two fleets on the go. Our ships Let's use get fire them control moving. systems to automatically target and fire on any hostiles that move within range. Turrets will be less accurate the smaller or further away their target is. You can access a ship's fire control and check on its firing solutions for yourself. All right, so we'll uh, select the Lancer here, and we will see. So we can right-click on a unit or select and press space. I like the right-clicking just because, you know, that's, that's the way I am. So here we've got uh, four different things we can see with the Manticore Corvette. We're not going to worry about three of them. What we're going to worry about right now is the turrets, and we can tell our turret. First off, we can see here... Um, you know, the firing arcs of these ships. So you can see we got turrets in the back, turrets in the front. So we're going to tell all of our turrets to focus fire on this Nemesis Corvette here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. What we're also going to do, though, is maneuver our ship so that our guns will stay forward-facing. Now, this guy is going to move. So, you know, I mean, he might move past our forwarding arc, our firing arc. But as long as we keep, um, you know most of our guns pointed forward we should be fine so we got our order set for the Perseus and the Lancer as so we can see there this ship has taken uh, hits in the front obviously because it's forward facing and we're forward facing we can see we're taking a little bit of damage there oh. Hostile Sir, unit we've got a new Dreadus contact Dreadus IFF confirms the contact is a silent Corvette. Scanning for further intelligence. All right, thank you. Uh, that little stuttering doesn't happen every time uh, ships jump in. So it was only 
It was only the one. Like, it, that's the second time that stuttering has happened to me with the exact same ship, and that's the only time I've really noticed it. So, the game isn't, it's certainly not a AAA game. There is some jankiness, there is some personality to it. But, um, the, in the five hours that I played yesterday, there was no crashes, other than a little bit of performance issues late, late in the session. There's really nothing going on. Uh, it's really well put together, and it's it seems pretty darn, for me, it seems pretty darn stable and runs pretty darn well, so no complaints there. Now, what we can do is uh, continue using our Corvettes here, our two Medicor Corvettes to focus this guy down, but because we got a new target over there, I'm going to shift the Lancer this way. So say we all. And I'm going to tell it... Once identified, select an enemy unit to see the data. Oh, that's what it's telling me. These to do. Cylon okay, Corvettes go. won't hold up to sustained fire. Focus your turrets on one side to punch through their armor and destroy the hull. Thank you very These much, Admiral. These also King. have long-range guided munitions, useful for softening a target before closing in for the kill. Ah, well, now I knew about the missiles, <clears throat> but that little tip has given me a different idea. So what we're gonna do with the Lancer is actually. Keep focusing fire as best we can on that Corvette. Now, it's probably going to run past us here. But I think if we can, like, if we can get him in a crossfire here, it would not be a bad thing. What we're also going to do is fire off some guided missiles from both our Corvettes on the, on the other Nemesis that, jump, that just jumped in. The guided missiles are on a cooldown, <clears throat> so you can't continually spam them, and as you can see, you have certain amounts of missiles. So once you use them in battle, they're all used up. Uh, that's pretty much all we're going to do here, so let's just end the turn. Keep focusing our fire down on this Corvette. And don't run into us. Ship collision is definitely a thing. You want to be Commander, concerned and careful your about ships don't seem to be performing as well as they should. Uh, they may have system damage that's been overlooked. Okay, so we'll right click on a ship and check Tell out the, the repairs. Engineering crews aboard those ships to hot fix what they can. I'll see to their comprehensive repair once you've finished with your engagement. All right, well, that's great. We'll get the tech repair bay, tech bay repair underway. And uh, that'll be good. So obviously ships can have, you know, multiple orders. Um, they're not stuck. <clears throat> you know, like you can repair, you can fire your guns, you can fire missiles, you can move, you can do everything in the same turn, provided your missiles aren't on a cooldown, for instance. I'm just gonna quickly hydrate there. Lovely, okay, so <clears throat> now, we're getting into a bit of a, a bit of a clustery situation here. As you can see, we got like three ships all clustered around this sector. Got another nemesis over there. So what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna send this guy over this way. So say we all. And I'm gonna tell you to target. We'll cancel that focus fire. You're gonna focus fire on that guy. And you should be nicely within your firing range. Then what we're also gonna do here. I'm going to move this guy forward. Now, I want to try and, I guess, we're not really going to be putting it in a position where there would be a collision. If you, if, now it's not 100% perfect. I haven't had a problem with collisions. I haven't had a single collision yet. But if you are going to collide, um, this green little hollow projection will turn red to let you know, hey, you're going to freaking die here. Because I think collisions, like, kill the ships that are involved. So this is a perfectly viable tactic if it's a must-win situation and you sacrifice some ships, I guess. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say ramming is what, we, what we'd want to do. So our ships are going to avoid each other nicely. This nemesis will probably back on last one more round. But the nice thing is we can just, you know, chase this guy down with that guy now. And let's see, that hull 
has seen better days for sure. Now, if this guy continues on his course, it'll probably be a bit more like so. Understood. So we'll do that. And we'll chase this guy down. Not a problem. Oh, press M to see the tactical map. Okay, so we can you go up and use the tactical map. There's only been one situation where I should have used that and I didn't. Otherwise, I, I've done everything on this map screen just because it looks better. Alright, so that's one Corvette taken care of. So let's do a complete yes, 180. Tell you to focus fire. Now, I don't have to tell him to focus fire. There's one ship left, and and your ships will auto-target pretty well. So that's not too much of a concern. Um, Understood. Definitely not going to be all that helpful. So I guess what we'll do is we'll pull them up around like this. Missile's still on cooldown. Yeah, we got one, one turn left on those missiles. So we can pull him around and then maneuver him back. Um, thankfully, the Percy's here will, should in theory, keep fire coming in on this guy. Maybe not, because he is, he is pretty far out of range now. Yes, sir. But if we do something like that, and something like that, we should be able to get some guns in on this nemesis. Oh, he's launching missiles, is he? He's launching missiles at this guy, who's got good front missiles armor, incoming. so that's not going to be too bad. Initially, there's not much you can do to avoid missiles, I don't believe. I could be wrong on that. Um, later on, you can get missile defense and stuff like that. What I will do is take uh, the Lancer here, boost her energy. So say we all. And a bo boost her thruster. So as you can see, if you go into engine boost, uh, your turning arc is reduced, but man, you can go forward faster. So let's go ahead and do that. And considering... The amount of damage this ship is taking. What we might want to do here, just a little bit of overkill, yes, Commander. but let's get some salvos going here. As so you can see, before we had 20, now we've got 16, so it, it tracks in how many missiles are launched each time. And it was unnecessary to launch those, but whatever, you know? Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned missile launch every now and then? All hostile contacts are down. We recorded a vid feed of the battle if the commander would like to replay the fleet's performance. This is one of the coolest things that uh, is in the, the little battle thing that goes on is that you can go back and view a replay real-time of the battle you fought. So, while well, you fight the battle in, in sort of a, a set turn-based uh, system. You know, you can come back and, I mean, this isn't necessarily a particularly exciting battle. Um, two Corvettes against two Corvettes. But it's cool that they put this in, and when you get bigger fights, it's actually kind of neat to go back and, and sort of watch a cinematic take on the battle that you let. So, you know, we got the missiles coming in. We got our Corvettes avoiding each other there nicely, switching fire between the two of them. I mean, and it sounds like Battlestar Galactica. The music, I don't think, is from the game, or from the TV series, but it's certainly reminiscent of it. Some tracks more than others, I will say that. Some of the tracks don't necessarily feel like it belongs in the Battlestar Galactica world, but you know what? On the whole, the music's pretty good. I never got sick of it in the five ball. I mean, I guess it's only five hours, but I never got sick of it. It's good. And uh, the gun sounds are great. When you hear them, of course. 
I like how they do kind of the muted sounds like they did um, in the show. And this should be finishing up that last Nemesis Corvette quite nicely. And then we get a breakdown of, you know, what was going on. We had our data in the shipyards and the two, uh, the two Corvettes, you know, I don't think any of these stats got recorded or anything because I know we had an accuracy rate higher than 0%, regardless. Congratulations, Commander. But we still have work to do. Hey, from the strategy index, you can manage your fleets, view mission briefings, and find locations on the table. So that's pretty handy. To access a mission briefing, select it from the strategy index or click on the mission marker. So we'll just go Kane ahead and do that. Kane has got her stomping boots on. Started shelling out orders before she'd even finished sticking the Admiral pin to her jacket. She's out to prove she's ready for the top job of Colonial Fleet. Can't feel good to earn that promotion off the back of your superior's bad luck. But... We've all lost someone in this war, I guess. My sister was on Galactica before it disappeared. Kaikon's government is blaming Kane for not delivering Athena earlier. Both she and Sinan won't be happy until we've delivered all 12 of the Jupiters to the colonies. Well, at least we'll get to see Athena clear out some toasters before we hand her over to Pycon. Daedalus is ready to jump on your command, sir. All right, so we'll dismiss that. The voice acting in the game can be hit or miss. Um, I find the actor who did Helena Agathon a really good job, which is good because she does a lot of the voice acting. Some of the support characters, they can be hit or miss. But you know what? It's, 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 it's not the worst voice acting I've ever heard. That's for sure. So um, what we need to do is tell our uh, little colonial fleet here of two Corvettes and the shipyard to do a jump. And we have to jump over to Pycon. So, go to Helios Alpha, we will go to Pycon. Now, <clears throat> I would have liked to have been able to... Oh, we can. Well, look at that. So, yeah. I would have liked to have been able to click on a, on a world and jump to it. Apparently you can. I don't know why I thought you couldn't, but you can. So we will go ahead, order that jump, and we will end our turn. So we're there now, and we will proceed to this next battle. Now what I'm going to do today is get through um, a little bit of the tutorial missions, basically uh, here, and then, you know, that we got uh, freaking Battlestar. Maybe it's the next mission? Anyway, before uh, combat, you can go through here and uh, set up your ships. <clears throat> uh, we can set up on our data list, we've got it's it's got two fighter squadrons. We can have the Viper Mark One at the moment. There are missions uh, very early on to get the Viper Mark Two, which is the the um, fighter that that you know we see in flashbacks in the Battlestar Galactica series. It's what you know Adama flew. Um, we can we can swap out, well, swap out a Viper Squadron for some Raptors, so we get longer range. Uh, Tratus, uh, but we won't bother with that. We'll keep it at Vi Viper Mark II's, and then we've only got guided missiles for the Mana Cores, so we'll leave it at that. But before, you know, each Fleet battle, you want to make sure... In three, two, one. You got your ships set up properly, especially when you've got a new Jump ship. Complete. Dratus contacts bearing 017, Karam 021. Pycon and the rest of the 12 colonies are watching our every move, Commander. Some would see Colonial Fleet fail. Ensure we succeed. You got it, Lucinda Kane. No Kane. pressure, sir. No pressure at all. All right, so we can see, <clears throat> if we go out to the map here, I'll be able to point it out better. We got three unidentified targets uh, in the system. And we thankfully have three ships, so this should be pretty simple, shouldn't it? <clears throat> what we're going to do yes, commander. is go ahead, get the Corvettes going. And we got the Athena, which is a battle star. Now, as you can see, <clears throat> different ships have different uh, distances they can travel based upon size, speed, what have you. Obviously, battle stars are big and slow. So they're going to be big and slow. Which is fine. 
uh, what we will do, actually. And one of my complaints about the game is, like, if you go into movement, and then you're like, oh, but I'd like, I'd like to boost the thrusters, you've got to set a, uh, a destination and everything like it's, like it's all tickety-boo. And then go back and, and turn off the boosters. Just a little minor niggle, you know, but it's, it's those little minor niggles add up over many many hours of gameplay what we're also going to do is um get the battle star to launch their vipers and we'll actually uh launch the vipers out of the daedalus as well are not lifeless assets to needlessly throw at the enemy, Commander. Adjust a ship's posture to tailor the crew's tactics so that you can match whatever opposition you encounter. So what, you, so what Admiral Kane there is telling us, <clears throat> if we select the Lancer here, um, over here we can uh, right-click posture. A defensive okay. posture ensures the ship's defense-oriented subsystems are more efficient. Likewise, an aggressive posture will boost the ship's offensive capabilities at the expense of the ship's defenses. Okay, so down here we can slide it so that it's all, um, you know, focusing more on defense. And you can see there, <clears throat> our, uh, I'm, I'm pointing at the screen, which is useless, our engineering and our armor strength goes up at the expense of fire control and navigation. And we can go all on offense, so we get fire control, I guess not at the expense of navigation, just really at the expense of fire control. But um, if we go full fire control, we lose engineering and armor. I like the idea, but I found, at least for myself, keeping things balanced is just the better way to go. Maybe I haven't hit, you know, a, a situation where I've needed. Um... To, to adjust the, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? The, the, the posture of a ship. But, um, yeah, so far, so, so far you keep things balanced, everything's going to be fine. So we've got the three contacts. We can see down here, this guy's probably making a flanking run <clears throat> on the Daedalus. So the first thing we're going to do with the Vipers we launched Understood. from the Daedalus, we're going to send over there. <clears throat> with the Vipers we launched from the Athena, we're going to send... Actually, no, we should send them up against the yes, War sir. Driver Squadron. So that's exactly what we're going to do there. Uh, there we go. All right. And we will continue. What I'll probably do... Yes, Commander. ...is make sure the Corvettes don't go too far back and keep them kind of close to the Athena just so we can keep the fleet together. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and end that turn. And our fighters should go hostile flying unit off. Identified. Obviously our Corvettes. ISF confirms unit is hostile. We're going to start opening up on the War Driver Squadron there. Commander, receiving word from Athena's CAG. Their alert vipers are online and ready to return hostilities. All right, I got ahead of myself. I should have I should have waited. We we can't we can't launch any squadrons, but now the <clears throat> the tutorial understands that that is indeed what we're doing. So we got two Vipers coming in on this Nemesis. Now I hear some people out there being like two fighter squadrons against the Corvette. Believe me, it, it'll it be fine. Um, we got our other two Viper squadrons coming in here and engaging these war drivers. And it, it looks like from the number of little glowing blue pips here, the war driver squadron has already taken a lot of damage flying in from our Corvettes. So that's good. Corvettes aren't necessarily a anti-fighter um, weapon. So we're just gonna get the get the old boost energy uh, or boosting thrusters off. We're gonna turn broadside. So let's take a look here. <clears throat> a battle star has you know a, a very nice fire arc, but it's mainly a broadside ship. So, there's a few broadside ships in this game, and it's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Because you can really get good effective broadsides on ships. So anyway, as you can see, 
Uh, this Talon is just going to be coming into into um, firing range. So we're going to have the Athena turn her broadside so that you know she can unload on that big ship. And um, we're also going to fire off missiles on their way. The Corvettes guided missiles at the Talon, <clears throat> and just kind of make sure that they'll that that ship is going to stay in the range of our Corvettes as well. Our fighters have their targets selected, and if they take care of a target, they will just go attack the next closest target, which for the most part is all you have to worry about. Use squadrons to hit priority targets or defend any of our own capitals. You can recall a squadron back to its carrier if the situation begins to deteriorate. All right, now we're not going to have to worry about that. This this situation is not going to deteriorate to the point we got to call our fighters home. So we can see, uh, that, you know, I mean, they're not doing the world's greatest work, but they're already starting to, to weaken the armor a bit on that nemesis, which is lovely. Um, this Talon here is already in a world of hurt, so, you know, that's fine. We can see missiles coming in on the Athena. Now... Yes, Commander. The Athena's got good armor pretty much everywhere, so we should be able to handle one missile barrage from a nemesis. What I will do, though, is move myself well, maybe more like so, so we can get the turrets from the uh, from the Athena going that way. The forward-firing turrets can start opening up on that nemesis, which will be nice. And then what we should also do is get our corvettes Understood. set up so that they can start turning around and coming onto the aft of the talon everything else is looking good so far so let's go ahead please select a viper mark one there we go okay and press space to access squadron command yeah you can select your target that nemesis that's fine we're doing just fine there okay and turn missiles incoming All right, so <clears throat> what does this red wavy bar mean? It means we're getting hacked. So if we take a look at the Athena, we can see we got a firewall defense of 29, and that is coming down. When it does finally get down, what they're gonna wind up doing is hacking certain subsystems. And either through the repair subsystem or through just over here when you see a little, a little wrench, you can click on it and the repair crews will start repairing that particular subsystem. So it is possible to get subsystem damage uh, done to individual ships, so or done to individual individual subsystems on ships. That's always something to keep in mind. What we will do is fire off some guided missiles, uh, probably at that guy. And now we can see these two squadrons here have torn through their war dog or war driver squadron, whatever it was, and they're now focusing on the talent. I don't want them to focus in on the talent. We got a nemesis down here that could probably do with some more damage. Understood. So now we'll send all of our Viper squadrons against it. Now that, that Corvette's gonna have to deal with four squadrons of Vipers instead of two. And you know what, that's gonna make its life far more difficult. I'm guessing it's gonna continue going straight. So if I position the Corvette like so, we should be fine there. And then we can turn that around and keep fire going in on the nemesis um we should be able to uh now i lied when i said there's no way to defeat missiles <clears throat> i'd completely forgotten about this until i saw it battle stars have flak so what flak will do um is fire off a barrage a barrage of flak cannons either on the left or right side that will clear uh the space of missiles or enemy fighters or friendly fighters uh, in that area. Obviously, you can see here, warning, friendly squadron active, don't fire off your flak uh, in a place where it's going to destroy all your fighters. So, but oh, so far uh, th that I've come across, only the Battlestars have that. So, you know, that's it's something to be concerned about. 
Uh, we still got no subsystem repairs. They haven't made it through our firewall yet, so that's good. We got those orders in, so we should be fairly good to go. A battle star is being hacked. Okay, so we can see here uh, they made it through our firewall. And we've got fire control that's, you know, almost completely gone, which is not good. We need Understood. we need fire control on a Battlestar uh, for them to do Battlestar things. So let's keep on this guy. And um, can we? Yes, sir. Yeah, we can pull a nice sharp turn there. Get that guy in range. And uh, the Vipers are, are, you know, finally starting to make some good work on that Nemesis there. Commander, I've asked Sinan if there is any way we can stop those Cylon tech ships from hacking our systems, but he's being stubborn. We've already minimized onboard networking. Your firewall should keep them out for a while. Otherwise, take the subsystem offline for repairs if they cause too much damage. Or you can rely on the tried and tested method of shooting the Cylons down before they get the chance. I'm gonna be Battle honest. Stars are equipped to accommodate flak ammunition. Use this to zone out fighters and incoming munitions. Yeah, well, we're not gonna do that now because all we have are friendly fighters incoming and no... You're not gonna, you're not gonna wanna, okay, we'll put you like that. That ship's taken care of, that ship's taken care of, we can start pulling these yes, guys sir. back around. And those Vipers should be making a beeline for that Nemesis. Now that Nemesis should also, quite frankly, I, I don't want to fire Flak though. That Nemesis should be, uh, so we want our left turrets. Oh, no, we'll just go focus fire. Oh, that system is being repaired. Of course it is. Okay. Well, things should still fire, right? So. <clears throat> Maybe they won't still fire. Okay, we can take that off. We don't need to worry about repairing the hangar. All of our ships are out. You don't necessarily have to worry about Understood. Um, recovering your ships, because you're going to be recovering all those Vipers after combat. But now, yeah, there we go. Now that the freaking fire control system is completed on the Athena, he's even just tearing into that Nexus. Kratos is cold. All hostile contacts are cleared. If you're finished playing with Pycon's toy... I believe it's time to hand Athena over to their defense ministry. Of course. They've already been notified, Sinan. Commander, there's something else. We're having some difficulty with Daedalus's navigation computers. It'll be easier to explain from the war room. All right, well, let's go see what the issues are with the Daedalus's computers. Admiral, Commander, we have a problem. The Idris relay that we use to outsource our jump calculations is malfunctioning. Malfunctioning. What's our effective jump distance? It's difficult to estimate with just the onboard computers. The red line extends beyond Helios Alpha, but we'd probably need an intermediary jump to get anywhere significant outside of the system. This is what an ambush looks like, Commander. Find us a way back to Helios Gamma immediately. I want Daedalus under the cover of Ragnar's clouds before the Cylons can attack. Commander, we're going to need more ships. Sinan's taken up yards one and two for the Jupiter-class battle stars, and we're only prepped to crunch manticores right now. The floor crews are changing their build priorities as we speak. There's no use having half-built battle stars if we can't defend them. Okay, so as we progress into the game, more things start to open up. We've now got shipbuilding to worry about. And of course, we can only build one ship. It's the Manticore Corvette, and I'm only building it because I have to. Okay, we've got the Manticore hull underway, but let's push its fit out and training schedule forward. And I'd really rather not spend most of my Tilium to rush this thing, but again, I don't have your a choice. Your brand new Manticore is awaiting your orders, Commander. New fleets will create their own fleets when finished and can be merged with an existing fleet group 
at the same location. So if we take a look at our uh, at our little galactic map here, um, <clears throat> I guess it's not even galactic. It's just you know a couple of solar systems. Anyway, we got the Colonial Fleet Three here with the uh, new Manticore Corvette we got. So we're just going to transfer that to the Fleet Group Daedalus. Sir. We suspect a satellite at Caprica Terminal may be the source of the Idris interference affecting our jump distance. I have the briefing packet ready. And so now, you know, if we take a look at our fleet, our that Colonial is... Colonial Fleet relies heavily on briefing. the Idris network. It provides access to accurate real-time locations and trajectory data of interstellar objects. The network is vital to our jump calculations. Without Idris, we can't tell if there's going to be a planet-sized inconvenience at the end of an FTL jump. We believe the Cylons are behind the interference of the Idris network and using the civilians at Caprica Terminal as a human shield. Caprica has granted us operational access to the terminal surrounds. Galactica is still MIA, so there will be no Battlestar to save the day if the Cylons do show up. To recap, we have to destroy every Cylon transmitter we find, restore the Idris relay, and jump back to Ragnar, all without causing a single civilian scratch. Just another day at the office, right, Commander? Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, we'll dismiss that. So, uh, yeah, so if we take a look at our fleet here. <clears throat> fleet Group Daedalus. We now have three Manticore Corvettes and the Daedalus itself. Uh, it's going to cost us Tilium to recharge. Can't quite get into the economy yet, but, you know, we're running out of time in this video. And we'll just have to continue it in another day, that's all. Um, so... I guess I don't have a choice. Jump to Caprica. Yep, we'll spend the Tilium. Uh, so that order is set. I'm going to go ahead and give the game a save. Uh, this is, you know, the game that I was <clears throat> uh, playing out last night. And uh, 25 missions completed. This, this, you know, it's not bad for a couple hours sitting there <laughs> straight. Anyway, uh, we will take the second slot here give that a save and that is going to do it for today so um if you were just here to watch some Battlestar Galactica Deadlock I hope you enjoyed it um you know if you did let me know that would be great uh if you're here wondering you know like what the heck is going on with the channel I don't know why you'd sit through a 47 minute video to find that news out but hey here's that news because when else am I going to present it so yeah haven't been doing a lot of videos lately um, mainly because I haven't found a game really that's, that's like pulled me in from a hey we can record and do a series on this I think Battlestar Galactica Deadlock is a great game uh, for a YouTube series there's there's you know it's it's an open world really like once we get into it you'll see what I mean by an open world but there's there's missions to do there's stuff to keep the story going and uh, critically it's it's naval warfare tactics, which there are no real, there haven't really been too many games that have covered that, and this game does a really good job of doing space naval combat, which, you know, it's it's always been a little bit of a passion of mine. Um, I've always wanted, really, with a few changes here or there, uh, I've always wanted a game like this, and now there is one. And I'm, I'm enjoying it. I love this game. From the five hours I've played already, sure, there's, there's, there's problems, there's issues, there's, there's quirks and niggles, as there always will be with, you know, any video game that's out there. This is a really good package. It's solid. It runs well. Uh, you know, just don't push it too hard. Make sure you're taking some, some breaks. Don't five-hour marathon it and then, you know, Save your game, get up, walk around a little bit. Don't follow my lead on that one. Um, yeah, so... I guess, too, if you're looking at this from a review perspective, I would, I would definitely recommend this game. Because of what it is. Now, it, with the way the uh, main story progresses, is there much of the way of replayability here? I mean, I don't know, you could probably go through the campaign a couple of times 
trying out different strategies and things of that nature. I think where the where the issues of replayability re, or certainly not an issue, but where the idea of replayability comes in is once you get involved in having to run around and try and you know fight the Cylons in this war. I think that's where the game can really open up and um, provide some some interesting YouTube channel fodder. So I hope you guys agree, because um, there will be more videos of this coming, and soon. Um, like I say, the past little while, I've been having issues finding games that I want to play for an extended amount of time. Granted, I haven't played this game that long. That feeling might change, but I don't think it will. And I certainly don't think it will um, over the course of a, of a Let's Play series because of the, the nature of the game. So, yeah. This will be hopefully... Well, no. Let's get rid of that, hopefully. This will be revitalizing the channel. I've been looking for another flagship series really since Silent Hunter left. And this is the first game that I've been kind of like... This could... This could replace Silent Hunter on the channel. So, yeah. It's nothing like a submarine sim. But... I don't know. I think, it, I think it works, and I think it hits all the right notes. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. I'm excited to get into this. I'm excited to start bringing more videos to you guys. Hope you guys are excited to see them. Uh, if, you know what? Thumbs up if you have enjoyed today's video. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.